Uh, hello everyone, this is Hasha from Midas IT. I'm a geotechnical engineer. A very warm welcome on behalf of Midas IT to Finite Element Online Course for Geotechnical Engineers. So today, in this session, we'll be dealing with uh, the Pilot Foundation Analysis considering the soil structure interaction. The soil structure interaction is the main thing uh, uh, which will be dealt uh, in detail in today's session. And uh, a 3D finite element uh, analysis, basically the stress analysis will be carried out by considering uh, the soil as a continuum uh, material, which is a direct method. And we will be importing and uh, building from Midas Gen, which is a structural tool uh, from Midas. And we'll be modeling the soil uh, around that building. So that's how uh, we'll be uh, uh, dealing with the compatibility between uh, the GDS and Exxon Gen and in detail behavior of the Pilot Foundation uh, on a whole. So let's get into the session. These are the contents. Uh, I will be giving you an introduction about the foundations. Uh, of course, most of us knew about all types of foundations. So I will just go in brief about the foundation overview. And then I will give you introduction about uh, the methods of analysis. So what are the different methods that are available to analyze the foundations um, to get the structural behavior? And uh, what are the calculation methods for uh, spring stiffness? So we'll be dealing with uh, these things in, in this session. And then uh, we'll directly move into the pile raft foundation. So wherein uh, the interaction between the pile raft and the soil uh, will be explained. And then how to uh, model these interactions in the so uh, in GTS NX. So we'll use the pile interface for that. So that is a pile interface element and how to calculate the input parameters for the pile interface uh, we'll be dealing with them. So the methods to de determine the pile interface inputs. And then uh, we'll move into the software. So at first I will be explaining you the workflow in GTSNX, how to start and how to proceed. And then uh, we'll explain you the model which we'll be modeling. And then uh, I will go jump into the software, we'll model it and we'll get the results. And thereafter, we'll be sending you the certification task. So the similar uh, model which I'm show, uh, showing you uh, will be uh, given to you as a task and you have to model it and uh, you can send the report so that uh, we can cross verify it and we'll provide you with uh, uh, the certificate later on. Introduction. So, um, foundations can be classified under two categories. One is a shallow foundation and other is a deep foundation. So shallow foundations, uh, which are uh, three me the depth of the foundations more than uh, up to three meters can be considered as a shallow foundation. Or if the depth of the foundation is less than the width of the foundation, so then we can consider it as a shallow foundation. And there are uh, basically three kinds of shallow foundations. One is a strip foundation, second is isolated footing, and then uh, we have a mat foundations for uh, uh, clay soils. And then uh, we have a deep foundations. In the deep foundations, uh, the resistance comes in, in the form of uh, skin resistance from the soil as well as a tip bearing resistance. That means end bearing resistance. So uh, there are uh, different kinds of deep, uh, deep foundations as well. So we have pile foundation, and these pile foundations are also, uh, there are different kinds of pile foundations basing, uh, based on execution execution techniques. But uh, in uh, in terms of structural behavior, we have two pile foundations. One is end bearing pile and, a and other one is friction pile. And then we have well and case and foundation as well. So when the piles are connected uh, to a raft, uh, so this is a pile raft foundation. And uh, this is what we are going to model now. In general, there are two methods of analysis. The first one is substructure method and the second one is direct method. In the substructure method, uh, we are modeling the foundation along with the superstructure or you can simply model the foundation only and then you can apply the uh, superstructure as a load. Now, the resistance from the soil is modeled in the form of springs and the soil is not modeled as a continuum over here. We are modeling the soil as a spring. And for the uh, spring stiffness, there are many different methods to calculate it. Hence, uh, each method has its own assumptions and is applicable for certain type of materials, certain type of projects. So hence, it is important to go through the, uh, uh, it is important to go through the assumptions of different methods before using the, for, uh, for the heavy structures such as bridge and the high rise buildings. Now coming to the direct method. In the direct method, uh, we are modeling the soil as a continuum. So uh, you can model the superstructure 
or you can simply model the foundation so that's up to us here uh, let's say we are modeling the uh, a building or a bridge which is which has been imported directly from the uh, structural tool into gtsnx so here uh, we are modeling this soil and this input for, for of the soil can be directly uh, taken from the uh, experimental values or uh, in situ testing so we can simply model this soil you apply the loads get the analysis then and and see the behavior of the uh, superstructure. Now, important thing to be considered over here is the soil which we are considering has many uh, constitutive behaviors. So basically we can consider plastic materials or just linear material, means, I mean elastic material, or you can consider uh, nonlinear material along with the plasticity. So that's up to us. So based on the requirement and based on the importance of the structure, the types of analysis changes. So that's how uh, direct method is most uh, mostly applicable uh, for all types of uh, and, uh, for all types of geotechnical scenarios and is more applicable for the high rise buildings um, and heavy structures such as bridge. Now let's see the spring stiffness calculation method. Uh, and before that, we'll see the, uh, how the procedure goes between structural and geotechnical engineer. So structural engineer uh, will calculate the loads coming from the superstructure and will provide it to the geotechnical engineer. And now geotechnical engineer needs to calculate the wrinkler springs, basically the soil springs. And this uh, calculation can be uh, based on uh, different methods. Uh, we'll be dealing with those methods in later on. And uh, in order to calculate uh, the springs, he need to consider the investigation report that means uh, the properties of the soil and the column loads and then uh, he provides the springs to the structural engineer and structural engineer will uh, recalculate the loads based on the new springs that has been given and then uh, um, he runs the analysis provides the new column loads to the engineer geotechnical engineer then a geotechnical guy will provide you with the new springs and the iteration goes on and uh, and until uh, the results converges until both of them have an agreement to use the particular springs for the uh, analysis so this iterations goes on and in most uh, in many cases uh, the, the iterations can go on up to three to four uh, 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 three to four times uh, to attain to a particular uh, wrinkler springs so this is how uh, the uh, procedure follows and now uh, we'll see what are the different uh, methods that are uh, uh, that are applied to calculate this wrinkler springs by the geotechnical engineer Stiffness of the spring uh, can be calculated using uh, the NC2 testing or analytical methods or empirical equations or numerical methods. For example, uh, in case of a raft or a shallow foundations, we can simply get the uh, springs uh, stiffnesses by using the plate load test, which is an uh, in situ testing method, or we can simply uh, use the bowels approach, which is an analytical method to consider um, to attain this stiffness of the raft or shallow foundation. In case of uh, piles, uh, as you know, whenever there is a vertical load, the, the stiffness, uh, sorry, the resistance from the soil is based on the skin friction and end bearing resistance. So hence, uh, for piles, in order to calculate the stiffness of the spring, we can go for uh, the pile load test. Or, uh, as you know, the ultimate uh, load capacity of the pile is equal to the skin friction resistance and uh, 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 end bearing resistance. So we can calculate it from the theory as well. Then, in case of lateral loads, so first, uh, let's first suppose let's say uh, there is a lateral load acting on the pile, and uh, hence the normal uh, behavior of the soil has to be considered. That means the lateral uh, spring has uh, to be uh, taken into consideration. So as of now, you can see there is a uh, skin resistance spring that is a tangential spring, and then we have a lateral springs as well, and then the very bottom we have uh, tip resistance as well. Now. Uh, here, uh, in order to calculate the lateral springs, we have uh, many methods such as VISIX approach, uh, we have a PV nonlinear uh, uh, analysis approach, wherein we use reason matlab theory and etc. So uh, here, uh, for deep foundation, if you see lateral springs, tangential springs, and uh, uh, tip springs or end bearing spring has to be calculated based on numerical methods or empirical equations or analytical methods or directly from the testing. 
So these are the different uh, uh, methods that can be uh, applied uh, and that can be used for the calculation of spring stiffness. And these are some of the random methods which I have taken. And there are many methods as well. So uh, consideration of the method and for your project uh, is up to the user's discretion. Now uh, we'll be uh, dealing with the uh, importance of the Pilar Foundation and the different interactions uh, it, uh, it, it gets involved in. So let's say uh, we have a Pilar Foundation. So this uh, we in the on the top we have a raft and there are three piles over here. So we have many in, uh, interactions between them. That means uh, the raft will be um, interacting with the pile. That means the influence of uh, draft and uh, pile can affect the superstructure and then the pile and the soil will be interacting in terms of uh, skin friction and that will affect the structure so we have pile soil interaction raft and pile interaction then the raft is directly resting on on the soil as well then we have a raft and soil interaction and then next uh, the pile and the pile are interacting with each other that means the pile group effect so the pile group effect will also come into picture so as you can see there are many interactions that influences the behavior of the superstructure so uh, on a whole uh, all these interactions has to be taken uh, into consideration first of all let's say if you go if you want to go for substructure method then uh, the raft and the soil interaction can be considered and in many cases the raft and soil interaction is exempted uh, and then the pile and pile interaction that means the pile group effect cannot be considered so uh, that's one uh, disadvantage of the substructure method so hence uh, the direct uh, method is very much uh, important uh, uh, to be uh, and to be taken into consideration for uh, high-rise buildings or uh, bridge uh, bridge structures basically the heavy structures so now uh, so as now you understand the different uh, um, different interactions between the pile and the soil. So now we'll see how that can be implemented in GTSNX. So we have an element called the pile interface. So in uh, this is a pile interface uh, in GTSNX, which uh, will help you out in determining the uh, sorry, which will help you out in simulating the behavior of uh, different interactions between soil and uh, pile raft foundations. So for that, we have we need to input the ultimate shear force, shear stiffness modulus, and normal stiffness modulus. And how to calculate all these inputs? We'll see now. So at first, this ultimate shear force and shear stiffness modulus will these two inputs will help you out in uh, determining the uh, um, in uh, in simulating the skin friction, and then uh, uh, that normal stiffness modulus will help you it will help you out in determining the spring uh, not lateral uh, behavior of the soil. So how to determine this pile interface inputs? So first suppose uh, in, if you if you have done the pilot test uh, that means if in situ testing has been carried out uh, for your project then let's say you, you might be having ultimate uh, failure load of the pile. So for let, first suppose let's say the ultimate pile failure load is 1000 kN. Then we have the length of the pile as 10 meter and then pile thickness is 1 meter. So this thickness is not the diameter or not the equivalent circumference, uh, circum, uh, circumferential area. So here uh, this pile thickness is an input for input in this software GTSNX. Here uh, uh, we by default we consider it as a 1. Now then the ultimate shear force. So the ultimate shear force can be calculated uh, 1000 kN upon the length of the pile and the thickness. So here we have uh, ultimate shear force to be 100 kN per meter square. So if suppose if you want to consider the thickness to be around 10 meter, then 1000 upon um, 10 multiplied by 10. That means 10 kN per meter square will be your ultimate shear force. So by default, the value will be 1. If you want to change it in the software, uh, we can change uh, the value of 1 to some other value. Then uh, the ultimate, uh, sorry, then the shear stiffness modulus. So the shear stiffness modulus is calculated based on the ultimate shear force which you have uh, achieved. So ultimate shear force is nothing but, nothing but here ultimate shaft resistance. So this ultimate shear force upon the displacement which you have attained in the pile load test. So which uh, let's say there is a displacement of 0 0.01 meter, then uh, the value will be a value of shear stiffness modulus will be somewhere around uh, uh, 10,000 kilonewton per meter cube. 
and then normal stiffness modulus uh, uh, can be calculated it is uh, very simple uh, uh, very similar to the lateral separate modulus of reaction and now let's say if you do not have uh, the pilot test uh, data with you that means the pilot test uh, uh, has not been uh, uh, done at your uh, site in that case uh, we need to uh, come to a uh, conclusion on ultimate shear force so there are various equations proposed in each design code to calculate the ultimate shear force that means ultimate shaft resistance so you can simply calculate those ultimate shaft resistance and then uh, you, thereby you can calculate the shear stiffness modulus now uh, we have another met, uh, another method called uh, wizard uh, interaction uh, sorry interface wizard equation so wherein uh, we consider uh, the uh, elastic mo modulus oidometer elastic modulus and then uh, we consider the thickness uh, of the interface element which we are considering and the length and then uh, we determine the uh, normal stiffness modulus and the shear stiffness modulus so these are the equations corresponding to it here we uh, come to a conclusion on reduction uh, uh, reduction parameter as well so reduction factor as well so uh, for more information on this you can uh, directly go into the help manual so a very detailed explanation along with the example calculation was also given uh, in the uh, help manual of gtsnx now uh, we, so first suppose all these uh, it, all these methods uh, couldn't lead to couldn't uh, lead to provide you with a particular uh, uh, output in such a case you can go and use the timoshenko and goodyear equations as well so timoshenko and goodyear has proposed two equations wherein we can pro uh, get the normal stiffness modulus and uh, the shear stiffness modulus by using the input parameters of the soil such as uh, the radius of the pile and then um, the uh, uh, shear modulus of the uh, soil and then the Poisson's ratio of the soil so thereby we can achieve the um, uh, the part shear stiffness modulus and normal stiffness modulus so once we get the uh, shear stiffness modulus and uh, if we knew the displacement criteria then we can come back to the ultimate shear force so we can back calculate the ultimate shear force so that's how all the interface uh, uh, input uh, properties can be calculated So now uh, let me describe you the numerical model that we will be modeling uh, in this uh, uh, session. So here we go. Uh, at first, uh, we will be uh, I will be opening you the Midas Gen model. So wherein uh, uh, we have a complete uh, uh, model. Uh, you have a foundation. You have a superstructure. So this Midas Gen model will be taken uh, uh, into GTSNX. So here in the GTSNX, as we described, we are modeling and uh, uh, the, using the direct method. So I will be modeling the soil as well as rock as a continuum model. So here we have a continuum and the soil and rock uh, uh, um, uh, will be modeled using a Moculum constitutive material model. And for advanced analysis, uh, you can go for hardening soil model or modified Moculum model or uh, depending on the requirement, you can proceed for. And uh, now <laughs> the load, uh, first suppose, let's say, have an uh, uh, envelope load, which uh, envelope load case, that's let's say there is one worst case or envelope load case. I will be uh, taking the reactions at the foundation level and those reactions will be applied as a uh, load in the uh, GTSNX. So uh, those reactions at the foundations can be applied as in uh, um, as in uh, loads in um, the GTSNX. And now uh, let's say uh, we have a rock and that rock uh, in so the pile length is 15 meter and now so the pile is embedded into rock so the socket length is around 1.5 meter so basically the socket length varies from one times the diameter of the pile to four times the diameter of the pile and this uh, is completely depending or dependent on the type of rock uh, which you which we encounter at the site <coughs> So here, let's say we have uh, uh, some uh, good rock and we go for uh, two times D. So uh, the embedded length is like around uh, one, uh, 1 1.5 meter. And then the soil uh, is of 13.5 meter. And then we have rock of 16.5 meter. So this is uh, the model on a hole. And uh, once uh, the model of a soiling, uh, soil and rock is done, then we will be modeling the pile interface, which is the main uh, interesting topic. So let's jump into it. 
and uh, this is a workflow uh, so we are uh, we are letting you know the workflow in each and every session so because this is the main uh, thing which we need to go through uh, in each and every session uh, in each and every modeling scenario so let's say the geometric modeling is the f a very important thing uh, which we focus on so once the geometric modeling is done the rest of the process uh, the rest of the steps is just a process so first when uh, we have a geometric uh, model either we import the model or we create the model here so right now in this current uh, uh, session we are importing and uh, building directly from uh, Midas uh, gen so here it's not a geometry it's a uh, mesh set which we are importing but we are importing and then uh, we'll model the soil uh, around the um, around we are model the soil around the foundations that means underneath the building then we provide the materials and we assign certain material property let's say it's a 2d property or a 3d property here we are dealing with the soil as a continuum 3d model so we 3d stress analysis so we go we are going to uh, assign a 3d property to the soil and then we mesh uh, the geometry then we apply the loads and boundary conditions so here the loads which uh, we uh, we are going to import the and uh, import and uh, load combination from Midas gen to gtsnx and then we assign the boundary conditions so we analyze it uh, uh, since uh, soil is an uh, uh, highly nonlinear material and as the stress changes its behavior changes we will be analyzing it in construction stages so at first uh, uh, the soil in situ conditions that means soil and rock will be uh, given and then uh, cannot condition will be applied for it and then in the second stage the building will be uh, applied building along the foundation uh, will be activated and then in the third stage the load will be activated then we can uh, simply run the analysis and get the results so this is a basic workflow and uh, this is the same workflow which we can find it in all the finite element tools and uh, this is gtsnx is no exception from it so let's open the program Uh, since we are dealing with a 3d analysis so we'll go for 3d uh, model type and uh, the gravity direction gravity direction is z-axis so this is the gravity direction and uh, the unit system is in si units and here we go just uh, we'll start modeling now so as i said uh, the very first thing which we do is we will import the uh, gen model and uh, let me show you uh, the gen model for at first so here this is the uh, Midas uh, gen uh, software so, um, you can see the interface the interface is more or less uh, similar to um, uh, uh, all the Midas software has almost uh, similar interfaces and then this is a structural tool uh, this is a building and we have uh, uh, pile raft foundation uh, the length of the pile is like around 15 meters and then I will show you the load combinations that we will be exporting so let's go to the results go to load combination so as of now i do have uh, all the load combinations but if at all you want to generate a combination so we go to auto generation and then uh, this is a concrete and uh, we go for design code according to uh, the code which we develop and then and then simply say okay all the load sets and the combinations will be created but here uh, we will be exporting an envelope case wherein uh, all the combinations are there so basically the worst case will be exported uh, as of now and then uh, as i said we need to export the model at first so in order to export so click on the Midas gen icon and then go to export option so here we have mxt file for fea and gts so simply uh, click on mxt file and then you s save it somewhere I, I already have an mxt format so i'm not saving it as of now and then uh, uh, you can uh, go for uh, export of loads so as i said we are al we are also exporting load from the uh, software uh, gen to gtsnx so hence uh, go to nodal results for gts so here uh, we we do have a huge combination load so as i said we will as i said we will be going for envelope combination so we select uh, this combination 
we give certain name we add it and then when we press okay the co load combinations will be saved in a text format we need to import that uh, combination into gtsnx so i have already done it uh, i will show you um, i will be importing them into the software now go to import and here we have minus mxt format uh, give me Yeah. So import the MXT tool. So now, uh, whenever we are importing an uh, uh, building or my tool, uh, sorry, building or any industrial structure or a and an, or an bridge into the GTS NX, all the load combinations and all the point springs which you have applied, everything will get imported. So here, if you see all the loads uh, that has been applied in the structural software has been uh, imported that means the dead load is present the uh, live load is also present and um, so we'll see so here the self weight the dead load and live load are present and then uh, the wind load and earthquake load which uh, are uh, applied in the form of earthquake uh, so in the form of uh, uh, based on the codes has not been uh, uh, like uh, taken into the software but uh, all the static loads has been taken into gtsnx so now we will hide them uh, in order to have a better uh, experience and then this uh, more, uh, this foundation is being uh, um, given by point springs in uh, Midas Gen. That means uh, it has been applied uh, in the form of substructure method and then it has been applied with the point springs. So we do not uh, need those point springs any longer because we are modeling the soil. So we'll delete uh, the point springs. Then, um, so let's import the loads. So you go to import and then we have uh, import nodal results so here uh, i have saved it uh, in the name of loads uh, gen to gtsnx you can find the similar file in the uh, for your tutorial as well so just open it so now i'm importing uh, the load the load has been imported as you can see so uh, we no longer need the wind load earthquake load or dead load any uh, or dead load or so on because we uh, all those loads were present in the form of load combination uh, uh, which has, we have imported from gen so we no longer need all these forces but that's up to you uh, how to model them and so on just i have taken uh, one combination load um, and then we will be running for that scenario in this uh, session now So since we have deleted the point springs, I would like to delete those uh, functions that were present in this uh, in in the database. So just delete all the point spring property. Now, uh, since we have uh, um, uh, piles, and uh, we will be providing you a new message, I will be including the piles in uh, a new um, a new message so to have a more uh, better experience in modeling. So I will be doing that. So hide all your nodes, uh, so all your loads and the boundary conditions. So simply go to the side view. Uh, just right click on uh, the new message. As, uh, include uh, elements. So we'll go for intersect option. So let's include all the 280 objects. So those are all uh, the objects. So uh, this one is your raft and the bottom one is your uh, piles. So this is how it looks like. Yeah, so we will name the uh, new message and it will be named after piles. So we have loads we have piles and we have boundary conditions so the only thing left is to start uh, modeling the soil so now uh, if uh, i will be uh, going into uh, the horizontal vertical plane so double click on xy work plane and now go to top view here uh, the important thing is um, we will be modeling the soil and then we need to make sure that raft and piles are in, in contact with the soil. So let's uh, model the soil first. So go to geometry and then go to rectangle. So here uh, we will be modeling uh, uh, two, uh, two domains. 
so i will be explaining you now the first domain uh, let's say it's uh, uh, it started 20 comma 20 and then end at uh, 40 comma minus 25 so this is uh, the first uh, domain and then we have a second domain let's say minus 10 uh, comma 40 45 and then the relative distance is 100 uh, comma minus 80 yeah so this is the uh, whole area and then uh, uh, this is the inner domain wherein we will provide lower mesh size and the outer domain will provide the higher mesh size so um, to, uh, so that uh, uh, since the pile interface will be applied, I will have better uh, results if you have a uh, lower mesh size. And then uh, uh, and we will be providing the outer uh, domain, uh, the longer outer domain, so that uh, the effect of boundaries will not be present on the results of uh, the pile uh, results of uh, the building. Now, now uh, let's uh, extrude the soil. So go to uh, the basic. So select the inner domain and extrude it uh, to a length of minus 13.5 meter. And as you can see, uh, 1.5 meter uh, is left uh, as an uh, embedded or socketed uh, depth in uh, a rock. So select the bottom part and then 16.5 meter. Yeah. Now uh, we'll select the outer domain. Similarly, it's uh, thirteen point five meter, and select the bottom surface, and then this will be minus sixteen point five meter. So okay. So now the soil uh, geometry is modeled. So we need to make sure that uh, this is uh, the uh, inner domain is uh, in contact with the outer domain so that we'll go for auto connect option so go to auto connect so select all the four solids so we have two inner solids and uh, two outer solids so just say okay so now uh, the boolean cut operation has been performed and you can find uh, this uh, has been uh, cu cut out from the outer domain so let's hide the geometry and now uh, while uh, meshing I need to make sure the raft should be in contact with the solids so we need to imprint the nodes onto this geometry so in order to do that we need to convert those nodes to points so what we do is uh, we'll go uh, to point and then go to convert node so select uh, so we are only interested in direct contact of raft with the uh, soil so that we will only convert the raft nodes for now but the pile will be in contact with soil in the form of pile interface so no need to convert the nodes of your uh, pile elements to um, to points so here just convert the raft nodes yeah, so the uh, nodes has been created. So you can see these are the different nodes. So now we'll just input the material properties. So at first uh, we uh, we will we are having a 13.5 meter depth of soil. So let's uh, give the name as soil. Soil uh, with the 50,000 kilonewton per meter square of elastic modulus. 0.3 poisons ratio unit weight of 20 and then saturated unit weight of 21 initial void ratio of a 0.5 and then uh, cohesion of 30 and friction angle of 36 so uh, well applied then uh, we have a rock let's say it's a siltstone and then let's uh, the elastic modulus is uh, uh, 210 uh, 210,000 and then the unit weight is 22 and uh, the uh, uh, saturated unit weight is also 22 and then cohesion is uh, 205 kilonewton per meter square and friction angle of around 27. 
And now, uh, as I said, we need to in, uh, in, like uh, input the file interface element as well. So the, um, as explained in the previous uh, uh, slides, we have uh, different methods to calculate the pile interface properties. So go to pile. So we'll give the name as uh, pile. Pile interface. Soil. So uh, in, for, uh, the, for the current problem, I have uh, calculated the values using uh, Timoshenko and Goodyear equations. So the pile interface of soil uh, is having uh, ultimate shear force of 320 kN per meter square, shear stiffness modulus of 321 uh, to zero, and the normal stiffness modulus of uh, 76923. Apply. And then we'll uh, name rock. So uh, you can see the soil has been created. Now rock uh, properties will be applied. So 2753, 275318, 317, and 323076. So these values were calculated using Timoshenko and Goodyear equations. And uh, uh, as, I, um, as I explained earlier, uh, ultimate shear force and shear stiffness modulus were uh, the input parameters which will define the skin friction and resistance of the soil. And uh, first suppose, let's say in the uh, rock, I'm only interested in having end bearing resistance and I do not have any uh, other uh, resistance from the rock. So in that case, you can simply, uh, uh, you, you may proceed on giving only uh, the zero properties uh, over here, ultimate shear force and shear stiffness modulus. For since uh, this is an a demonstration model I'm giving some values which I had directly re uh, received from the Timoshenko and Gurias equations so let's say okay now uh, we need to provide the properties go for a 3d property soil and then uh, silstone and then we have uh, By interface for soil and then this is the pile thickness which I was I was talking earlier uh, this by default is one meter so keep it one meter rock and then give the name as rock so uh, let's start meshing So we'll be meshing uh, Dynado mine at first. So we'll provide one meter mesh size. Uh, we'll go for hybrid measure. Give the property as a soil. And here uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, the mesh generated uh, should be is uh, we need to make sure that mesh generated should be in contact with the raft so hence we need to select the interior points and select all the interior points for the raft and we need to make sure those uh, points are imprinted on the geometry so consider imprinting a shape on face has to be enabled press ok and this is uh, inner domain Yeah, so uh, the soil has been um, meshed, the inner domain has been meshed. So if you hide uh, the points, you can see that proper node to node connected for each and every node uh, was done. And now um, let's mesh the bottom part. And uh, let's give the uh, mesh size as one meter. This will be rock inner domain, one meter. So uh, now let's uh, unhide um, 
the outer solids so we'll mesh them I will give a 2.5 meter mesh and this is uh, soil outer domain hybrid measure and say apply uh, now uh, let's uh, mesh the bottom part New the mesh says is uh, 2.5 meter only and uh, say okay so uh, I forgot to pro uh, input the property of pile tip so uh, after meshing we will be in, uh, like inputting the material uh, property for pile tip and then uh, we will assign the pile interface and uh, we'll proceed on with the analysis Yeah, so now uh, the meshing of uh, entire soil domain has been completed. So the next thing is uh, application of a pile interface. Uh, 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 th that means assigning the pile interface to your piles. So we'll be doing that. And before that, we'll just uh, uh, update uh, the pile tip properties. So go to the property tab. And here in the property tab, we need to go for other uh, option. So here we have a pile tip. So give the name as pile tip. It's nothing but end bearing, and uh, so you can calculate the end bearing resistance uh, using the analytical methods and uh, or uh, of, for the rock uh, properties that you have. So for now, I have calculated using the analytical method. So it's somewhere like around uh, 8,000 kilonewton, and 8,000 kilonewton upon uh, the settlement criteria. Uh, if first suppose let's say if the settlement criteria uh, of your uh, um, uh, let's say is around 10 to 12 mm uh, a vertical settlement then you divide upon 8000 uh, uh, divide 8000 upon with uh, 10 or uh, 12 mm so first uh, for now i have calculated it as uh, kilonewton per meter so 8000 for 8000 upon 12.5 mm or 8000 upon 10 mm and so on so that's how it, we we get the pile tip pass uh, tip spring resistance a tip, a tip spring stiffness basically so now we have pile tip and pile interfaces and so on so let's uh, assign the material properties to the piles so i'm hiding all the message just unhide the pile and uh, here in the mesh tab uh, we have element properties and then we go to pile and pile tip So I will be selecting all the uh, top parts. Uh, I will be, I will not be selecting the bottom part, the entire uh, bottom part. So the bottom part will be used, uh, will be applied with interface, pile interface rock. So the top part will be applied with the pile interface soil. That means the 13.5 uh, meter uh, distance will be applied with uh, the soil properties and then the bottom uh, part will be applied with the uh, pile interface rock property. So here uh, the pile interface soil. So we will assign the name as pile interface soil. So say apply. So uh, if the mesh uh, surrounding uh, this, uh, this pile interface is coarse, then the results will not be accurate. So it is always recommended to have fine mesh surrounding the pile uh, pile interface. Only then uh, the, pro, uh, the resistances and then the skin resistance will be uh, calculated easy, uh, will be calculated and will be applied easily. So it's always recommended to have a finer mesh around the pile interface. And then hence I have created a particular domain wherein one meter of the um, domain is for pile interface one domain is for uh, finer mesh and then the outer domain is for coarser mesh so now uh, let's apply a uh, pile interface rock property to the bottom part of your uh, uh, piles so have used intersect option just uh, um, 
so uh, all the elements that comes under this interface uh, uh, window sorry it comes under this intersect uh, window will be selected uh, just like uh, uh, the AutoCAD so now I'm hiding it since the uh, selection has been done so to these uh, pile uh, beam elements I will be applying the interface uh, file interface rock property And then uh, to the bottom of this pile interface, uh, we will be applying the pile tip. Yeah. Now uh, let's go to the front view and then uh, go to the pile tip tab. Here uh, we'll be selecting the bottom part of the piles. So here, these are the bottom parts. And then uh, this is a pile tip which we have defined. Then press OK. So pile tip, pile interfaces, uh, at the bottom uh, pile rock uh, interface, and then uh, soil uh, interface. So as I said, uh, this pile uh, interface for the rock uh, generally offers uh, a skin resistance as well as, as well as end bearing resistance. Uh, if 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 at all uh, it is required to exempt the skin resistance from the rock, uh, then it is required uh, to input the uh, rock properties pile interface rock properties uh, uh, as zero for ultimate shear force and shear stiffness modulus. So that's up to the user discretion on how to proceed uh, any further. Now, so now I have uh, 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 I have enabled the uh, building. So the building is in center under default uh, mesh tab, uh, default mesh uh, sets. So after generation of interface, that means after creation of interface, the common nodes between the raft and the pile will be divided into two. So here, uh, this pile, uh, this common node is now divided into two. Uh, we need to uh, merge those two nodes so that uh, the rigid connection between the raft and the pile exists. So go to Merge tab. So select all the uh, nodes and uh, the tolerance is one e power five and then click on Find. So here we go all the nodes which are connected to the raft uh, ha have been enabled and then uh, the intersect uh, nodes be uh, the nodes which are uh, common between the soil and rock interface were also enabled but simply select all the nodes and then simply click on find the software will be finding uh, uh, the nodes which are in this tolerance so we simply say okay so now we have uh, a rigid connection between the uh, pile and the raft. So if at, all, if, if at all you want to cross check, you can simply uh, click on the node. So we have only single number. So that means only single node is present at this particular position. So we just uh, disable it. So now we have uh, almost the model has been done. Now uh, we go to uh, the loads and the boundary conditions. So at first we'll go for application of sulfate. The rock and the soil have its sulfate. Uh, so we'll give the name as sulfate. Uh, and then uh, we go to the constraint, go to auto. And then we give the name as ground support. And if you might have observed, uh, we have uh, certain columns coming from uh, uh, the building. So these columns, uh, uh, since it is not resting on any of uh, the simple uh, footing and so on, I haven't modeled those fittings. So we uh, simply use the boundary conditions. So these boundary conditions were uh, uh, directly imported from Gen itself. So we are not uh, uh, enabling any node to node connection between the soil and the uh, these columns, but we have created or we have applied the boundary conditions. That means the fixed support has been applied. So you can see all the rotations and the translations were made zero at these uh, positions. This is uh, 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 this is one of the technique uh, just to uh, disable the unwanted things uh, because of uh, because if there are no uh, if there is a, a direct node to node connectivity between the soil and the column, then in that case uh, the load will be directly uh, directly applied onto the soil. 
so load has to be applied onto the uh, strip footing or uh, uh, isolated footing over there and from the footing it has to be carried uh, to the soil the load should not directly applied onto the soil because it may lead to uh, the plastic failure and so on so hence uh, i have created the boundary set so I haven't created it has uh, automatically in, um, taken from my minus 10 to gts now this is the load set now it's up to the stage definition now so go to uh, the construction stage so here in the static slope analysis construction stage and click on the stage set give the name as uh, pile raft analysis and the stage type as stress analysis so double click on the pile raft we'll make sure that uh, everything is activated The first stage uh, should be named after in situ condition, and then uh, here we have uh, uh, here in this uh, 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 construction stage we have only in situ condition. That means only soil is uh, modeled, and then be, uh, the self whatever uh, the displacement which it encountered based on the self height has to be disabled. So clear the displacement, and then uh, activate uh, the ground support, and activate the self height and the plight and click on new so here uh, we will be activating the building so all the building uh, for and foundation so the piles pile interface and the pile tip everything has to be activated and then uh, press save then uh, as I said uh, this column uh, which you are uh, able to see uh, these columns are to be applied with uh, boundary conditions so we need to activate those boundary conditions so activate uh, bc set one say apply and then go to new and then uh, in the third stage it's a load stage the load will be activated so we're not going to activate any of these loads but we'll be activating only uh, the combination load which we have uh, taken from midas uh, uh, gen so this is a load combination load the load will is acting on to the piles and now say save close so the construction stage definition has been done so we'll run the analysis so go to analysis tab and then general and use the solution type as construction stage and uh, pile raft analysis so give the name as a pile raft uh, analysis and then in the analysis control uh, so uh, i forgot to apply the uh, water level so we will apply the water level and then uh, consider automatic uh, water pressure so since in the NC2 condition, uh, uh, NC2 condition only soils are uh, present. I mean, soil mesh sets are present, which are horizontal. So hence, K0 condition can be applied. Uh, whatever the negative effective pressure, which has been calculated uh, using the K0 condition, has to be taken off. So hence, cut off uh, those uh, negative effective pressure and activate the estimate initial stress of activated elements and initial configuration of activated elements. So press OK. So now we need to define uh, uh, the water level. So go to in C2 stage. So here a water level should be of around uh, uh, four meter from the surface. So the surface uh, uh, from the surface from the origin basically from the origin uh, it's four meters and origin and surface is same in this current model. So hence uh, four meter and save. And in the load stage, uh, I could ask the software to apply the load uh, in, in stages. That means in uh, number of increments. So let's say 15 increments and I would ask the software to save the results in each increment. So the software will save the result in each increment. So thereby you can able to draw the graph uh, force versus displacement curve. So hence uh, press OK. Close. So you can simply go to perform and run the analysis. I do already have uh, the model with me, so we'll uh, show you the results now. So here, this is the model, uh, and uh, let's uh, show you the translation at first. So we have uh, 15 increments. Uh, let's show you the settlement. So 
so we have a maximum settlement of 15 mm uh, but uh, I, I don't want to have a settlement on uh, coming in the building so we'll hide the building so you can see uh, the maximum settlement which you can uh, find that uh, on the build uh, on the soil is just a 3.57 mm so the maximum settlement is 3.57 mm so we can see the deformed shape so this is how uh, it's deforming and i would like to show you uh, the section view so let's go to the clipping plane this is a clipping plane and uh, let's provide it somewhere in the middle and uh, say add okay we'll go for another uh, y plane and we'll reverse it and say add so uh, the union of uh, these two uh, will be taken so go to union yeah so i will hide the water level so this is the section uh, view so we'll see uh, the load vary uh, the displacement variation in uh, stages that means in the increments that we have applied so select all the increments and then say okay and you can drag this bar so that you can find the results in uh, different stages so uh, as and when uh, um, the building has been uh, up applied we just found only 3.2 uh, mm and then you can see this is how the settlement is increasing so it's uh, very uh, low values that means uh, uh, we do not have a huge settlement coming onto uh, the um, coming onto the found uh, coming onto the soil because of uh, a good uh, good soil and good rock properties so here we go uh, this is how you can find it And or else you can simply play the animation uh, video and then you can save that animation and that will be helpful for your uh, presentations as well. So now uh, we'll uh, see the results of uh, the piles. So hide all the methods and activate the piles, pile interface and the pile tip. So go to results. So in the very last stage, I'm showing you the results of axial forces and bending moment in the very last stage. So go to uh, bending, uh, sorry, beam element forces, click on axial force. So the maximum uh, uh, force which you can find is uh, 543 kilonewtons. So uh, minus uh, a negative sign uh, in the software is nothing but the compression. So here we all have uh, the compression load of a uh, five not, uh, sorry, 543 kilonewtons that, uh, that is onto the middle pile, in the middle pile. So these piles are facing huge uh, uh, axial uh, load. Then uh, we go for a bending moment. And again, uh, the bending moment in the middle piles is high. Uh, let's convert it into a kilonewton meter. We do have uh, around 34 kilonewton meter. So this is the bending moment about uh, local Y direction. And you can find the bending moment about the local Y direction as well. So local Z direction, that means uh, local axis. So this is how the bending moment, you, we have the maximum value of around 57 uh, uh, kilonewton meter. Now uh, we'll, we'll see the skin friction, how uh, the skin friction uh, is being applied. So go to pile of force and you can simply click on tangential force. So here you go, um, since uh, we have applied uh, uh, the rock uh, um, in, uh, skin friction as well, so we do have a skin friction, a lot of skin friction applied uh, coming at the bottom, means at the rock uh, interface. So I'll be hiding the rock. This is how uh, the skin friction value looks like. So the maximum value is uh, 19 kilonewton per meter. And then uh, the skin tip, uh, pile tip is that means the end bearing resistance is around 354 kilonewtons so the maximum end bearing resistance which we uh, got is around 354 kilonewtons so um, the model is very safe as of now but we'll see the uh, plastic uh, uh, zone so how the plastic zone is coming and so on so you can go to uh, solid stresses and then click on plastic status 
so there is no plastic stainless that means the soil is not uh, moving on to the plastic zone at all if the load is higher if uh, uh, the soil is weaker and in such cases you can get uh the plastic join uh, in the in the in the model but as of now there is no plastic join so that's how uh you can get different results now um i would like to show you uh, a, another model wherein i haven't uh, applied uh, skin resistance for the pile interface rock so we'll show you the model yeah this is the model So we have interface rock property and interface soil property, and then we have piles. So I would like to uh, show you the properties that I have considered. So in this model, just uh, for the sake of explanation, uh, I would like to show you the interface rock properties. So here uh, uh, I have considered the zero resistance from the skin resistance from the rock. So the ultimate shear force and shear stiffness modulus is made to zero and we only have the normal stiffness modulus. So I have made the model to run and then uh, we'll see the results now. So we found a maximum skin resistance of 19 kilonewton per meter in the soil uh, uh, interface. So we'll see uh, the maximum skin resistance uh, now. So the pile tip force go for tangential X. So you have increased the skin resistance from the soil uh, that is around uh, 24 kilonewton per meter for the loads that we have applied. And then the axial force has uh, uh, is now 503 kilonewtons. Before it was 543, and now it was it is uh, uh, 503 kilonewtons because the skin resistance has been increased. So there is a redistribution of forces, and now uh, the axial force is uh, 503 kilonewtons. Then uh, we have a bending moment. Uh, it's a bit higher, 34 kilonewton meter, and then. Uh, uh, 57 kilonewton meter in both the directions. So since this is a 3D analysis, you can get a bending moment about uh, uh, y-axis and global y and global x-axis as well. Now we'll see the pile tip force. So pile tip force is 454 kilonewtons, so it's way higher now. And the, uh, the rock is only uh, resisting uh, uh, on, on the basis of and varying resistance. So no other forces are uh, uh, taken into consideration. So now um, there is no skin friction uh, at the bottom of the piles. That means that the rock, uh, we have and varying of 454 kilonewtons. And uh, in, in, in the previous model, wherein we provided the skin resistance for the rock uh, as well, we'll see the pile tip force. So it's 354 kilonewtons. So end bearing resistance has also been increased in case of rock. In case of rock. So that's how uh, you can able to differentiate uh, 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 effect of skin resistance onto your uh, uh, onto your building, and that's how uh, the behavior of uh, the building can be simulated using uh, the uh, using the direct method in uh, GTSNX. So getting back to the presentation. So these are the total displacements. So as I explained earlier, and this is the axial forces, you have, uh, I hope you have, uh, uh, you, could, you could able to uh, differentiate uh, the axial forces uh, with the uh, skin resistance at the rock and without skin resistance at the rock. So you can see that uh, the axial resistance uh, has been decreased uh, in case of uh, no resistance at the rock. That means the end bearing resistance has been increased and the soil uh, uh, axial force uh, has been uh, uh, decreased from 540 kilonewtons in uh, no, um, in, uh, without uh, uh, with skin friction at rock and without skin friction at rock. So it has been uh, decreased. So this is uh, with skin friction. So we got 549 kilonewton and then we have bending moment uh, of 57 kilonewton meter. And this is how the skin friction varies from top to bottom when the rock is applied with the skin friction properties. The so rock interface has been applied with skin interface. Uh, with uh, with uh, skin resistance, so that's how uh, you could able to um, achieve uh, uh, the behavior which we wanted.